Dr. Yang, I'd like to spend a few minutes first talking about your involvement in this specific case. Are you familiar with the plaintiff, Mr. George O'Malley? Yes, I am. He was a patient of mine. Can you tell the jury how you first met Mr. O'Malley? I met him at the emergency room in Mercy West Hospital in the early morning hours of December 12, 2010. I was the, the surgical, the attending surgeon that night in the emergency room uh, on call for orthopedics and neurosurgery and I received a page to the ER about Mr. O'Malley. Now, what was the first thing you did when you arrived in the emergency room? Uh, the first thing I did, and what I usually do, is review the patient's chart. And what, when you say the chart, can you tell the jury what that is? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a medical chart that contains the intake nurses' observations about the patients and the feedback to any questions that the intake nurse asked the patient. Your Honor, at this time, I'm holding what has been previously marked for identification purposes as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, and I'm showing it to opposing counsel. May I approach the witness? Yes. Dr. Yang, I'm handing you what has been previously marked for identification purposes as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Do you recognize Exhibit 1? I do. What is Exhibit 1? It is Mr. O'Malley's intake form, the medical record, from when he visited us at Mercy West Hospital. And how specifically is it that you recognize Exhibit 1? Well, in addition to the intake nurse's notes, I include my notes in here as well the results of my examination of the patient. Now you told us that you have some notes in there and that the nurse had some notes in there. Were those notes placed into the medical file pretty close in time to when you or the nurse acquired that information? Yes. And is this document one that's kept in the regular course of business activities at Mercy West Hospital? It is, yes. Your Honor, at this time plaintiff offers what has been previously marked for identification purposes as plaintiff's exhibit one into evidence. Hearing no objections from opposing counsel, let it be admitted. Dr. Jane, you told us a minute ago that the first thing you did upon arriving in the emergency room was to review this document. What did you learn from your review of the medical chart? Well, I learned that Mr. O'Malley was involved in a car accident recently, and that he was complaining of pain and reduced range of motion in his neck and shoulders. Upon learning that information, what were your next steps? Well, the next step is to do a physical examination, and that's what I did in Mr. O'Malley's case. Now, you said a physical examination. Please explain to the jury exactly what that entailed. Well, because he was complaining of neck and shoulder pain, I did a palpation exam of that area. What is a palpation exam? Well, a palpation exam is where I use my hands and gently probe the affected area. In this case, it was Mr. O'Malley's neck and shoulders. Uh, so I just probe around the neck, uh, base of the skull, uh, the shoulders, that area, and then I check for a range of motion. What did you learn from this physical examination? Uh, well, Mr. O'Malley responded that he was in extreme pain when I touched his uh, neck and shoulder area. So I stopped and I immediately ordered an x-ray. Did you suspect any particular injury at this point? I thought he may have some kind of neck injury. And was that x-ray that you ordered, was that performed? Yes, it was. Dr. Yang, at this time I'd like to direct your attention to the last page of that medical chart that we, we talked about just a minute ago. Let me know when you get there. This one? Yeah. What, can you tell the jury, Show that. please show that to the jury, and tell them what it is they're looking at. Uh, this is an x-ray of Mr. O'Malley's neck. Um, you might not be able to see it from there, but it shows the vertebrae from one to seven. And if you look closely, you can see here at C5 that Mr. O'Malley has a bifacet dislocation fracture, which is where the, the fracture runs about halfway through uh, the bone right here at this particular vertebrae. And also at the C6, he has a teardrop flexion fracture, which is basically when a teardrop-shaped piece of bone separates from the rest of uh, the vertebrae here and puts pressure on the spinal cord. Now, 
Dr. Yang, directing your attention specifically to this teardrop fracture you were telling us about, you just mentioned that that fracture puts pressure on the spinal cord. What sort of dangers are associated with this type of injury? Um, nerve damage, uh, potentially paralysis. Now, these, these uh, injuries that you're talking about, the nerve damage, the paralysis, are, are these injuries that you expect, or damages rather, that you expect to see immediately upon the patient sustaining the injury, or is this something that gets progressively worse over time? These kind of injuries are progressive. So Dr. Yang, after you looked at this x-ray and, and you were able to make this diagnosis you just told the jury about, what did you do next? Um, well, based on the results of this x-ray, I thought it was best that we immediately proceed to surgery to correct the problem. Were you able to perform that surgery? Yes. Now, Dr. Yang, through performing that surgery, were you able to successfully repair Mr. O'Malley's injury? I was successful in preventing any further damage, but by the time he had arrived uh, at the hospital at Mercy West in our care, he'd already suffered substantial nerve damage. Dr. Yang, in your expert medical opinion, will Mr. O'Malley suffer any permanent damage as a result of this injury? Yes, he will. Unfortunately, will suffer from a 35% reduced range of motion in his left arm, and I'm afraid that he'll experience uh, stiffness in his neck and shoulders for the rest of his life. Thank you, Dr. Yang. Your Honor, at this time, the plaintiff has no further questions for this witness.